Hello everybody, how are you? Today I will be discussing on a subject which is one of my favorite. The subject is welding procedure specification. This is kind of my passion and give me a huge satisfaction for preparing this. I am basically from mechanical background, so I am a mechanical engineer and I am always be very near to the subject welding. I came to the Gulf as a welding inspector. Before I worked in India for around 5 to 10 years, in the quality department always there is involvement of welding. So I am very interested being a mechanical engineer. This was my subject welding technology. I took keen interest for doing this welding procedure specification, reading this, studying this, how to prepare. I earned this skill from my experience only. So I want to share a bit with you. If you need to know more, you can contact me one to one and put me a comment. I can help you out. This subject is little bit big. Today is just the introduction, how to prepare WPS, the concept behind it and the thought process behind it. We will be discussing on these following questions which comes in my mind when I am talking about welding procedure specification. In short, welding procedure always called as WPS. For a layman, it will be the first question. What is WPS? Sometimes we say PWPS. What is PWPS then? Preface, base concept of preparing WPS. Why we need WPS? We can just weld. How it differs from the method statement of welding? Method statement of welding is not enough. Why we need a WPS again? How many WPS required for a construction project? What is the weld and line designation table? Scope or range of a WPS? What is PQR? Procedure qualification record? How to run the PQR? And finally, what is the process of WPS approval from company? Let us go one by one through these subjects. First question was what is WPS or welding procedure specification. So let us go to a definition of it. A welding procedure specification WPS is a written document providing direction to the welder or welding operator. It contains all the necessary parameters, for example, joints, base metal, filler metal, position, preheat, post weld heat, etc. etc. including any ranges under which the welding process must be performed. This is kind of the basic concept behind preparing a WPS. Now, this is the preface. WPS is basically a document that serves as a guide for the effective creation of weld that meets all applicable code requirements and production standards. This is like a recipe of the welder. Like for cooking a curry, we need to know how much vegetables and how much spice, their proportion, when to add, how much to cook. Similarly, for doing welding, we need to also know that what will be the current, how much will be the voltage, how will be the electrode manipulation, what will be the filler, what will be the parent material. So, WPS is the recipe for the welders. As per the scope of the project, welding engineer need to identify the types of material to be welded, grades of, the grades of material, thickness of the material, types of welding procedure that is available with the contractor, and design code and qualification code, and any special requirement due to the service restrictions. For example, if it is a pipeline which will carry sour service, then impact test is a mandatory requirement for all the welding procedure. So this type of special restrictions and requirement we need to be, we need to consider. After considering this basic mandatory requirement and conditions, welding engineer now need to put it in the tabular format. This is termed as weld and line designation table. So basically in the company standards, there are different line classes. So first of all, from the project scope, welding engineer and the quality 
lead guys, they will sit together and they will see how many line classes are there. This tabular format weld and line designation table will also serve as a welding procedure log later on for the project. And this weld and line designation table is a mandatory attachment for the welding procedure approval submission to the company. The welding procedure shall meet all the requirements of the new job as a minimum. The following shall be checked. Material for the new job shall be covered by the WPS, diameter, thickness, PWHT conditions, means post weld heat treatment condition of a new job shall be covered by the WPS. If the new job is sour service, as I said, then the review sheet shall indicate for sour service or the hardness values in the PQR shall be checked. If the new job has impact test, has impact test requirement, then the review sheet shall be checked for impact approval and the MDMT. And the ranges of variable on the new project fall within the ranges of the approved procedure. A line description table for new work shall be submitted to the assigned inspector. Welding procedure for external structural support that do not attach to the pressure containing weldment do not require CSD approval because it is already pre-qualified in the structural welding standard AWS D1.1. Now the next point, how it differs from the method statement of welding. As a part of the quality plan or the construction procedures and method statement, there will be a procedure or method statement for welding. So what is this method statement of welding? It is about the construction process which covers the welding activities performed during prefabrication and field installation of pipeline and piping. Welding is termed a special construction process. So, this control procedure thoroughly details the applicable requirements. It includes as a minimum of scope, references, means code and standard references from international or all the company applicable standards shall be mentioned in any of the method statement or construction or quality procedures. Definitions, any terminologies used, procedure, WPS PQR qualification review and approval, qualification of welder, welding repair procedure, qualification review and approval, welding identification and numbering system, welding equipment validation, welding consumable control, pre-welding and fit-up inspection, buttering and weld built-up, in-process inspection, post-welding, visual inspection, NDT selection, weld status, repair and reporting process, welder's performance evaluation, control of welding quality. All these are a basic structure of welding control procedure or welding method statement. So on the other hand, welding procedure specification or WPS is providing the proven methodology. Proven methodology means we have to run the uh, procedure qualification test. The procedure qualification test is the practical proof that this parameter works for which the welding procedure is being made. So it is a guideline for the welder to follow during producing a sound and quality weld. The WPS must include the following information as a minimum. WPS number, revision, date of approval, PQR, the procedure qualification record details, project design code, WPS qualification code, base metal information, filler metal information, non-consumable electrode and insert information, preheat and post weld heat treatment information, the backing and purging gas information, joint design, technique, electrical characteristics, electrical parameters like voltage, current and travel speed, heat input, all these things, special restriction and common notes, as I said, the special restriction means impact test or hardness, external or internal clamp requirement during the welding, in pipeline company standards during welding, the requirement of internal external clamps are very specifically mandated. So we need to mention this in the pipeline WPS. Now, another question. 
we have one project so one wps will be enough or we will need multiple or several wps's who will decide and how to decide welding engineer and qc lead to sit and review project scope line designation table project material specification and line classes line classes and prepare a project specific weld and line designation table and assess how many welding procedure is required to cover the whole project material specification diameter thickness ranges to be used to weld below is a screenshot of a sample weld and line designation table let's say the first wps is wps number 1 so there is revision 1 revision 2 and revision 0 also and all the WPS shall have unique identification number so that there will be no confusion later on. There are different line classes in the line classes column. Why? Because all these line classes having a common material and they have a little bit of common thickness ranges. So all these line classes will be covered with this WPS1 and the design code you can see it can be used for B31.3 which is process piping, 31.4 liquid transportation, 31.8 is gas transportation. So all these type of pipeline projects and also the process piping you can use the same WPS. Qualification code means these design codes will refer ASME section 9 or API 1104 for qualifying the welding procedure you can adopt either one of these since ASME section 9 is having a relaxed range of um, welding essential variables that's why basically all contractor choose to use ASME section 9 then we have the corresponding PQR procedure qualification record number after that you can see the material grades applicable for this WPS which is API 5L grade X65 65 indicates the SMOI specified minimum yield stress which is 65,000 psi for this material. The diameter range is over 73 mm and then the thickness range is 7.92 to 15.84. So you can see the restrictions here, the range here. Within this, any material with this grade API X65 can be welded. Now, Process is SMAW and the electrode you can see for the route we have a 7010P1 there is an arrow at the right side which is downhill progression. The filler wire will go from top to bottom which is a very speedy process. The filling capping is also arrow downwards that this is also a downhill SMAW. Then well joint type is but type of clamp used is internal or external and service requirement you can check hardness yes required impact is required so that means the service is our service and pwht not required generally in the pipeline welding the thickness range uh, where pwht is required is very high which is 2 and 1 4 inch that means over 32 mm another wps you can see it is also more or less similar but what is the difference here root is smaw means stick root and f cow g that means automatic filling and capping you can see the third one is also similar but this is not smaw root this is a gmaw root that means semi-automatic welding root mig welding mig welding root and f cow means flux core arc welding automatic welding process in the filling and capping so i put three different types of uh, welding process and welding procedure you can see how it is represented so when a welding engineer uh, prepare this table uh, with the help of QC lead together uh, then they can at a glance get an idea that all the line classes are covered all the thickness ranges are covered and they also discuss with construction team so that they will tell okay sometime maybe we will be using total SMAW for the tie-in wells and then when uh, we will be doing the line welding for better production we will be using automatic welding or a combination quality department and the welding engineer has to fulfill the construction basic requirements now let us see the next question scope or range of a wps from this uh, table i show you last in the last slide it is very clear for you that all welding procedure and codes and standards 
is relaxing contractor with some ranges and grouping. X65 qualified welding procedures can qualify the downgrades also. This is a relaxation provided by the international and company standards. The range is being decided on the basis of the following factors. Only some major factors are discussed here. Design code, qualification code, severity of the service. If it is a sour service, it is different. If it is a utility service, it is more relaxed. Welding process to be used by the contractor. That means if they want to use SMAW, argon welding or automatic welding, semi-automatic welding. So welding engineer has to make the welding procedure based on the site requirement. Argon root and SMAW filling capping. So these combinations also as construction is asking or as construction like to use on site, we have to prepare in the same way. Application area means if it is for pipeline, the procedure have some special requirements. If it is for piping, same WPS can be used. But for piping, there are very specific processes which generally not used in the pipeline. And there are structural, of course, most of the structural already pre-qualified in a WSD 1.1. There are some cases where you also need to run a procedure qualification test where this pre-qualification range is not working. Next question is what is PQR? How to run a PQR? Procedure qualification record which is termed as PQR or WPQR means welding procedure qualification record. To qualify a WPS, welding engineer need to prepare a pre-WPS where you will use the same um, format of the welding procedure but the data he will put, he will put an approximate range of current, voltage, all the parameters which is generally in a normal practice. To verify or validate this data, we need to run a PQT, Procedure Qualification Test. It shall be arranged by the contractor and to be witnessed by company approved third party welding inspector. He will record the actual data in a form which is termed as PQR. Why a third party inspector is being used? Because he will not do any partiality and he will record the actual data. So some information about PQR. PQR to be arranged by the contractor in their approved facility or fabrication shop. The welder selected for the PQR is generally very good experienced welder. He will be qualified automatically if the related WPS is approved by company later on. PQR shall be fully witnessed and inspected by company approved third party. Basis of PQT will be the pre-WPS provided by the contractor and generally prepared by the welding engineer or the QC lead guys. Third party inspector to record all actual welding parameters like current, voltage, travel speed, heat input during the test. After the test completed, the welding test coupon to be delivered to the third party lab for further non-destructive test like radiography, ultrasonic, penetrant testing as required. After NDT acceptance, the third party again take the test coupon in the destructive test laboratory for bending, etching, impact testing, hardness as required by the codes and standards. Completed PQR will be stamped and signed and forwarded to contractor to finalize their WPS along with all the destructive and non-destructive test reports. The final question uh, is the process of WPS approval. This topic we will be discussing on the last video of this series because now in sequence we will be discussing how to prepare the structural WPS. Then we will be discussing how to prepare a piping or pipeline WPS. When we have an understanding of the welding procedure thoroughly, then we will go for the process of approval. This process has nothing technical. It is only some know-how. What will be the attachment for the WPS approval package and then how to route this into the company from which department to where. So these are all some information. But the more technical thing will be in the next two videos which will be structural WPS, how to prepare and then how to prepare the piping and pipeline WPS. For now, I'm signing off. If you like my way of teaching, 
प्लीज शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब माई वीडियो रेफर इट टू योर फ्रेंड्स टू मेक माई सेल्फ मोर इंस्पायर शेयर माई एक्सपीरियंस विथ यू थैंक यू